So day seven, um, only day seven because we never had a full crew the last two days, <laughs> but we'll see if we can get the gable steel done and install the garage door. So to start, um, you're on a piece of gable divider and it's two inches uh, deep. So be sure to give yourself a good half inch on top of the steel because all the sheets on top of the door are cut. Um, so they could, they could be a little bit higher, so you don't want to have to pull that steel off. There's lots of room to move with the uh, divider. Now, the, if you look at the very end sheet, it actually sticks out past, um, past the first sheet there. So to make the ribs line up, I did put a little section just on the, uh, on the very right, just, just a little lap. Um, one pretty much one rib there um, and that way the seams end up on the same rib as well and that just looks better from the road when it's all uniform going down so basically um, first measurement um, because that that little piece cut takes care of that corner block too because the angle is different so instead of um, trying it with a big sheet and having to lose your ribs you can stick that little piece on the end figure out that corner and then the angle's the same all the way up. So basically measure the right side, then measure over three feet and measure up. And then that's your first measurement. Cut your first sheet, if the angle is right, then you just need to measure right here where your overlap is, 32 and 3 eighths. And then use your sheet that you just cut. That will be your template because your angle will never change until you get to the peak. So um, tape boss is handy for that. Just measure your rib, record it, go back down, lay your template on it, make your line, cut it, then measure that one at the same time, the, the, the last rib on that sheet. And then you can take two sheets up with you at the same time if you're working by yourself. So yeah, here we go. Okay, that's the gable steel done. Um, took, it's about 10 to 11. I started around nine, two hours, not bad. Uh, I think I'm going to do the door next because um, it's a little bit overcast, but I think this afternoon I'll be in the shade for the back gable, so might as well do the, uh, the door now. So um, I'm just going to tidy up some of the steel. The cutoffs from the top of these will be the bottoms of the ones on the back, so most of those are already cut. There's the sunshine and there's my shade. Um, so I managed to do this just quick enough so I still had some shade I'll go inside and then I'll do the do the back so yeah here we go on the door so for the garage doors I basically open up my package lay everything out make sure I have everything um, pretty self-explanatory these are the bottom brackets with a little clevis in there to put the cable in uh, the bottom row is marked number one and they're all pointing up if you don't put the arrow up It'll bind, won't open and close very nice. Then the outsides uh, start numbering up as the roller starts going farther away from the door. You see the, the height difference. So we've got a one at the bottom, two, three, four, with all the ones in the middle, um, with the, all the arrows pointing up. Point them all in the right direction. And uh, it'll help with the installation. And then we've got the slide rollers uh, to adjust the top section with those. Then we've got um, our brackets for the springs and the bar. And then just your bags of screws. Um, they are different. The ones painted red are the ones for the bottom brackets. That way they know not to take those brackets off. That's why they're painted. Some doors are um, wood on the side and have wood screws. Uh, Garaga does that. I don't like those. I like the steel all the way through. So all of those are self-tapping self -tapping screws. Uh, they work very nice. Impact gun works the best. Um, we're going to start. It's a 10 foot high door. So we're going to mark 10 foot down and uh, go up just a hair from there and then put the blocks on, put the tracks on, put one section of door in, level it, and then we can build up from there. So here we go. I usually um, bolt one track to the one frame, leave the other one off. Sorry about the lighting. Um, and then assemble my whole door. So the four brackets along the top, my brackets on the bottom. You've got the clevis in there with the cable already in there and then your lag bolts in there on the side. 
Then you can just tip it in. Nice and even on both sides, because it is that way. <laughs> but you see how we're losing it here? Obviously this track isn't level. So now that we know our distance side to side, we can level the track, level the other track, and level the door. Here we go. So now the bottom section's in. Uh, the hangers there in the middle. Um, the other track is on and level. Now I can assemble the door panels, making sure that I put the hinges on the upside. Uh, this groove um, has a lip that the door, it sits on top of the section underneath. And then I don't put that other roller in. Now I just walk the door over, put it in the far track, set it down on, put the roller in my pocket, put the roller in the track, and then tighten it to the door. It works pretty slick. So I usually just tie the um, back of the rail up with a rope temporarily or a ratchet strap, um, bolt one side on. Now I put my top panel on and then I'll put the other assembly on. So this top door is important because it will have a steel plate in the middle of it for a b automatic opener. The other panels don't really matter unless you have an uneven door like a nine foot door they might have one odd panel and then the hinges will be a, a different size to make a curl around nice. So the theory is that when your door closes as soon as it opens it pulls away from the frame and as soon as it closes it only rubs that last little bit to seal it. So um, seal on the bottom, uh, top plate or top panel will be marked as top and uh, we'll throw that one in and then we'll mount our spring. I'll show you how to tighten that. That's all there is to it. Here we go. So these brackets I just bend into uh, a triangle more or less as a brace. Um, it's a lot easier to just go up into the trusses but what happens when you put a ceiling in you have to make this bracket anyway so might as well do it now because you can attach it to the truss and then if you add the, wall, the roof steel you can just drop it down, slide your steel in and then bolt it right back up again even find the same holes. So I just cut it, it's all one piece, I just cut the one angle, bend it. I got a nice hole there to put a bolt through. The truss lines up with a nice hole in the uh, frame. We should be good to go. Here we go. This is how our spring assembly goes. Uh, red is on the left, black is on the right. The springs do wind different. Uh, there's a left and a right spring, so it's important that when you're tightening this, it's actually lengthening the spring. So as you're turning it, it, uh, it gets longer. On the box, it tells you how many uh, turns to do. This is 10 and a half. Um, left uh, drum assembly is red, right drum assembly is black, and then it's got a bearing in the middle where these two bolt together on a mounting bracket. So we'll slide it up in there, make a bracket for it to sit against, and then uh, go from there. I got my bracket made, so the header goes right up into the truss, and uh, the 2x6 um, really stiffens up that wall. You really got to watch this header because it wants to twist. This is a giant spring um, and the theory is that as it coils um, it wants to uncoil and that's what lifts up the door. The more it unwinds the less tension it has but the more of the door is in the track and the, you keep it even so it's an even pressure all the way up. Um, I usually uh, just turn a couple by hand on one side and then tighten it up and that keeps the cables tight on the end and then it's just a matter of sticking bars in on this side counting the amount of turns and you can chalk a line and then every time you see the the line that's one turn or you can just remember or you can even see these uh, dashes and count how many times it's gone so 3 8 um, wrench in the top here uh, lift up now this is the most dangerous part and this is the um, the thing that gets people if I put the wrong bars in there the bars slide out um, and the other bar can come and whack you in the head because you are kind of in line with it pushing up on it it does get tiring so um, make sure you got the right tools crank that spring up um, they do lose tension over time so you might have to uh, when the door gets heavier um, you do have to tighten them up once in a while so I did leave extra on this side for a chain fall so there's not much bar sticking out on that end and when you uh, put your bracket in there you want it nice and straight that way and you want it nice and level going across this way so here we go 
So this is how I installed this typical door, um, 12 feet wide, 10 feet high, but definitely read the instructions if you're gonna attempt installing your own door. Um, any wider panels or heavier panels will have uh, struts that go across. Uh, if we put a, a door opener on it, the top panel should have a brace too because it pulls on the center of the door. I like the side mount openers much better. They're easier to install. They also allow uh, you to disconnect the clutch on the opener and open the door manually. Um, now you have a disconnect on the ones that go on the ceiling, but you still have to climb up and pull the cord. And I find every time that you need to pull the cord, there's something in the way that you, are, you have to climb over. So spend the extra money and get a side mount opener, much better system. Um, when we are winding the springs, uh, if you tighten them too much, as soon as you let go of the bar the last time, the door wants to go up because there's more tension on the springs than there is on the, the weight of the door. So I do uh, stick a pair of vice grips in the door before, um, before you start winding the spring. That way you can kind of hold the door, take the vice grips off and see if you need to back the spring off or not. Uh, within about six months, I'll have to tighten those springs. Good idea to lube all the uh, uh, rollers, and a good door will have about the same amount of gap uh, on the roller here on both sides, and then the same amount of light showing up uh, all the way around. Um, door opens really nice, I'm happy with that. Now the the door, you, want, you don't want to have to yank on the door to close it, you just want that sweet spot. Um, now I, I'm not 100% sure on where the final grade is, so um, I didn't install the seal yet because the point of the garage door is that it only hits the seal in the last little bit that it closes. So if he drops the grade about an inch, um, essentially your seals would be farther away and if he raises the grade up, the seal is going to go a little closer that way. So um, once he figures out the grade, he can put the seal on afterwards. So that's about it for the barn. Uh, very happy with how it turned out. Um, the windows too, uh, where we are now is we're standing on three quarter clear, but the grade is actually gonna come up uh, more stone to about the bottom of the um, skirt. And then the concrete's gonna come up to about uh, a, an inch and a half, two inches from the top. Bringing the grade up that much, I'll be able to look at the bottom of the house, but I'll still allow a pile of light in because the window's taller than it is wider. So the windows are in a really good spot. Happy with that. Um, the overhead door turned out really nice. Uh, my brother's gonna put the seals on the front yet. Gotta give him something to do too, and he can clean up. Um, that's it for my free labor. <laughs> but uh, if you are gonna build the barn, remember, Stay out of the sun, wear sunscreen, and stay hydrated. It was hard to actually to stay hydrated because it's so hot and humid the two weeks we were building it. We're ready for final inspection now. As soon as final's done, then uh, he can start moving some of the stuff in there. He doesn't really want to do anything until final's done. And uh, yeah, we had a good time doing another barn again. Um, I don't have, foresee any construction projects coming up. I gotta finish my barbecue. You can see it in the how-to of my picnic table. Um, but I gotta finish that and then we'll make a video on how to lay mortar and lay stone and stuff like that for the barbecue fire pit. But other than that, we got more projects to go in the shop, so we're going back in the shop. A couple more Cummins conversions and LS swaps too. I actually got a few LS swaps coming up. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you guys learned something. Any questions, shoot me a line and I'll see if I can help you out. Here we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because you never know what you're going to see next week on DeBoss Garage. If you like what you see, there's a lot of stuff happening to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.